The English Channel, October 1707. The victorious British fleet was on its way back from Gibraltar when thick fog descended. It became impossible for them to determine their position. They had no idea where they were heading. The fleet was steered into an area of shoals. Four out of 21 ships sank, and nearly 2,000 men died in a watery grave. In those times, people were able to accurately determine the latitude of a ship's position at sea. However, the exact determination of longitude proved to be impossible. To do so, one should have known local time to the second, but the grandfather clocks of the time did not work on board. It was absolutely clear for sailing nations that the first to determine geographic longitude at sea would gain a huge advantage over their rivals. The British Empire intended to gain this position of world dominance. After the tragedy in the English Channel, Queen Anne established the Board of Longitude. A sum of 20,000 pounds sterling was offered to the person who could find the solution to the problem of determining longitude at sea. Today, this prize is estimated to be worth almost four million dollars. John Harrison, a carpenter turned clockmaker, only became aware of the prize two decades later. He presented his plans to the Board of Longitude to design a clock that could also be used at sea. At first, he enjoyed the board's maximum support. He had to take into consideration sudden changes of direction, the constant movement of the ship, and fluctuations in temperature. The clock might be off by several minutes due to any of these external factors, thus potentially failing to meet the requirements that had been stipulated. It took Harrison about seven years to construct his first marine chronometer, which gained fame as H1. It ended up being a considerably large structure with numerous wooden parts. Nevertheless, in 1736, Harrison received permission to try his invention out on board a ship heading to Lisbon. The clock did work during the journey, however, new issues emerged. For example, Harrison had completely forgotten to take centrifugal force into account. Having returned from his journey, he immediately started constructing the chronometer, known as H2. Then, the British Empire went to war with the Spanish, so the Board of Longitude did not authorize the trial of the new clock at sea, so as not to risk the Spanish getting their hands on it. Ten years later, his H3 was not allowed on board for the same reasons. Capitalizing on 35 years of experience, Harrison completed the H4 chronometer in 1760. He had managed to compress the parts of the device, which was the size of a pocket watch, into 1.5 kilograms. Thus, it even fit into the hand of the navigator. 35 years turned out to be too much as numerous supporters of his on the board had died or retired, and the new members did not look on his work favorably. They considered this carpenter's aspirations to solve this 50-year-old problem an insult to the entire scientific world. They therefore attempted to keep him from testing his clock at sea. Fortunately, they failed. The chronometer was working perfectly during the test run. The ship reached Jamaica in 81 days, during which time the device was only five seconds late, thus meeting the requirements for the prize. However, having established brand new rules, the board was not willing to pay the £20,000 prize money. Having pointlessly negotiated for years, Harrison turned to King George III, who, seeing the unfair wrongdoings of the board, gave him the well-deserved prize in 1773. John Harrison had worked on his marine chronometers for 50 years, but he was only able to enjoy the prize for a bit more than two years, until his death in 1776.